Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So on a previous episode, I talked about the top five reasons why I only use Linux Mint. But no operating system is perfect, and so today I'm going to do the opposite of that, and I'm going to be covering the top five problems that I have with Linux Mint. Now before I go any further, I will say that these problems are related specifically to my hardware and my operating system setup. So you might or might not experience the same thing. So let's go ahead and start with something that I think a lot of long time Linux users can relate with. And that is graphics card drivers. Most people are using either an NVIDIA or AMD graphics card for many reasons. Whether it's gaming, all the way to multimedia, video editing and so forth. Having the most recent and compatible drivers is extremely important. And unfortunately, if you want the best drivers you're gonna have to use Windows. Now for people who've been using Linux for a long time they are probably very familiar with the fact that normally Linux users are given the short end of the stick when it comes to drivers uh, specifically with Nvidia earlier on but things have gotten better. For example for my graphics card I have an AMD RX 470 there is a new release that came out on June 15th 2018 and that is a great thing because I normally would not expect graphics card drivers to be updated very often or even at all for Linux. But in this case, AMD is doing a great job and even NVIDIA has stepped up the game. So right here I am using the AMD GPU driver. And even though this is awesome, I'm not going to complain. I still wish that it had the same drivers as I would get in Windows. And I know that's asking a lot. But I do want to get the most out of my graphics card that I paid money for. So I'm thinking it's going to continue to get better. You know, especially with things such as Vulkan APIs and also uh, with people getting into Linux based games because of other systems like Android, you know, where it is a Linux kernel. And so there's definitely going to be more compatibility going forward. So at least that is my hope. So getting to number four. Is something that is related to the whole display and that is screen flickering and this is something that has been random and whenever it occurs the screen would flicker and it wouldn't stop flickering and that's a bad thing because I can't use my computer at that point and so whenever this happens I usually have to restart my computer or restart cinnamon my desktop environment you know and there are times when I will restart my machine and the screen flickering occurs right on my login window and so I'm pretty sure it's all related to the graphics card drivers and then similar to that is the number three problem is that I get random screen freezes so what I mean by that is I'm using my computer everything's fine and then all of a sudden my screen freezes and my mouse is still working but my screen is frozen so this is a huge problem because it reminds me of my whole experience with Windows where the whole operating system would freeze. So that is a pain um, and it is random, very similar to the screen flickering. And so if I had to put this in general, this occurs maybe two to three times in a month. Okay, and uh, that is not a great thing at all because I do not like restarting my machine because of that. And normally that's what I have to do. So getting to number two is something that I think a lot of long-time Linux users can also relate with. And this is what I'm talking about here. So when I go here and I put my computer in suspend or hibernate, sometimes it doesn't come back up. And I've experienced this on so many different versions of Linux on a variety of different types of computers from desktops to laptops. And this has been going on for years. And so this is something that is random. And very similar to all the other issues I just mentioned, it probably happens two to three times a month. And the thing is, I'm not used to having to restart my computer, okay? Unlike in Windows, where that's almost like a daily thing, where I could leave my Linux machine on for a month or more and not have to reboot, even with system updates. And so whenever I suspend or hibernate, I would expect it to come back up. And when it doesn't, obviously I have to restart my machine. So the number one problem that I have currently with Linux Mint is that my USB 3.0 ports, sometimes they don't work, you know, and very similar to the other things I talk about, it's random. And this is a huge problem for me because obviously 
I want to be able to use that. You know, I have external drives that I put all my backups on. And whenever I can't get the fastest speeds available, then it's going to take me longer to back up my system, especially when I have gigs and gigs of data for all these 4K videos that I'm creating. And so that is something that I do not understand, you know, why it's a problem. Um, because I would think like things like your USB ports, uh, it would probably not be as complex as something like your graphics card drivers, you know. So I'm not a developer, so I'm not sure why, but I would think that would be a basic thing. And it happens enough uh, to where it is very uh, frustrating, as a matter of fact. Now, I have updated my Linux kernel, and so hopefully that will fix the problem. Normally, with every operating system release, these types of things are usually fixed uh, with kernel updates. Okay, and so that's the great thing about Linux. And so I'm hopeful that this will be fixed, you know, but I've had this problem uh, ever since I upgraded to Linux Mint 18. And so this is something that has been going on ever since that version, whereas the previous version, 17 and so forth, I didn't have any problems with my USB port. So I'm really thinking it's the version of Linux specifically with the kernel that's on. So hopefully uh, this will solve the problem. And so those are the top five problems that I have with Linux Mint right now. Um, if you had any thoughts on any of these problems that I had, whether you have similar issues or whether you have other issues, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.